what is up guys and of course welcome to another Valhalla Pokemon League battle and yeah finally made that intro been waiting far too long to actually create that and quite frankly I changed three Pokemons um, that I will talk about more in depth after this Wi-Fi battle so the likes of Mega Venusaur, Gardevoir and Rhyperior is no longer a part of my team as you guys can see on my team for this week battle I do have Gardevoir great Pokemon definitely felt it was unfortunate losing it, however, I needed to make space for something vastly greater in Mega Daenchi. So, that said, we're going against the Houston Rodents and Nasser, and his team is quite ferocious. He's definitely bringing the team I was expecting. Um, were a few things I think they had that could definitively shake me, but I think this was the smartest way it was going about it. So I was happy to see it since I designed with this in mind. So we see an Ente, Saita, um, Mega Swampert, I was going to say, but a regular Swampert actually, Mega Medisham, Tabu Koko, and Valplume. So yeah, those are really, really annoying Pokemon for me to be dealing with. However, uh, I expect both Ente and... Um, Medisham and uh, even Scyther to be adamant, at least Medisham, there is no reason for him running Jolly. With that in mind, since I poked it out speeds 100 base, I'm going to adapt to actually just adjusting myself to 100 base uh, adamant instead of Jolly, basically to get as much damage out of it as I can. Uh, major thanks to my co-coach Ellis for designing this. I think we had a great idea what we wanted to create and got around just about it. I, I decided a few checks here, but he definitely had the core aspect that he was going to run more physical towards me, hence I decided to do the same. So Lander's Adamant with Joshua Berry, um, Stealth Rocks, uh, Earthquake, Rock Slide, I believe, and U-Turn. Really nothing to it. Saita is an Aka Berry variant with Sword Stance, Roost, Bullet Punch, and U-Turn. Um, able to outspeed defensive Pokemon such as, of course, a Swamper, which I necessarily can't touch. Uh, modest, Guard War, Scoffed, able to outspeed Tabakoku, very standard with Healing Wish in case something goes wrong. Uh, Jellicent, physical defensive, able to just check Entei. Uh, it's a primal role, basically. It's, um, it's not supposed to do anything else. It's there to actually make sure that Entei can't do anything. Uh, kind of the same with Swamper, potentially. Uh, we have Scald, Shadow Ball, Taunt, and Recover. Uh, Taunt is there basically so Swamper can't set up in his stealth rocks, so we'll be able to outspeed that. Uh, Krogonal being of a modest nature, however, able to outspeed everything besides his Scyther and Tabu Koku. And since it's so specially defensively bulky naturally, I don't need to necessarily invest too much, but I do have some speed investment, of course, and some HP investment to be able to. We'll do as much as I like. I have Toxic, Freeze Dry, Recover, and Rapid Spin. Really nothing to it. It's very, very standard. And it's here basically to shake his defensive Pokemon in Swampert and Valplume. But also cannot speed Medicham if it needs to. And isn't too scared of Scyther. Uh, Jolteon, however, uh, a lot of HP investment, not so much in attack. Uh, able to outspeed his Scyther. Uh, it's a timid variant with a lot, a lot of HP and leftovers. This is mainly here actually to check Tabu Koku, which won't be able to touch a Jolteon. And it's the prime of this, this Pokemon. It is to make sure that Koku can run freely, uh, can't spam Thunderbolt. However, I can spam Thunderbolt towards him and I should just try to capitalize on gaining as much HP as possible versus that, and of course be able to speed my own stab when the train is up. So yeah, with all this in mind, all I really need to do is get rocks out of the field, so that is what I'm going to try to do. So with that in mind, let's of course go into the match. So from the get-go here, I was going to lead off with Landers. As stated, I just want rocks, so that's that's the idea, that's what I'm going for, that's what I want. As he leads up with Entei, and yeah, I don't feel necessarily that threatened towards Entei. I do believe I go directly for Stealth Rock here, knowing that it would be very unlikely for him to be standing. Uh, so Swampert comes in, and I fear that, you know, of course he's going to go for Rocks on his own. I don't see the reason for me going for an upgrade. So I go directly for U-Turn, and we see that this is a bulky Swampert. It's supposed to. Though, just confirming that is quite enough for me, as I bring Vasma with my own Cryogonal. And yeah, this Pokemon can't do anything towards us, I am fully aware of that. And um, all I really need to do is go for Rapid Spin here, since Scald nor possible of Stone Edge will hurt me that much, as Entei comes in again. Um, and yeah, Entei is an issue. Uh, however, Jellicent is a safe switch in towards this Pokemon, and since I'm bulky, I should be able to take anything when it throws at me, though one thing I do fear is the Grass UMC variant. It's either that or it's going to be a Salt Vest. So when I switch in here and he goes for Sacred Fire, I know he's not banded. 
Uh, so what I did here was actually calculating whether or not I could survive a Gracium C solar beam. And uh, yeah, I was supposed to be able to do so actually with quite ease actually um, <laughs> as it goes for it. Uh, and it was to be expected. Now the burn is unfortunate, but I will not be KO'd here, which is really good for me or rather it's, it's great to know that that is not the issue as it goes for it. Actually consider that Sacred Fire only did I was at roughly 37 HP. I'm actually in range where I can recover afterwards too. So with that in mind, I felt, all right, you know, I well, took this. I should probably go recover first, expecting what he did there. But as stated, I am still in range where I should not be KO'd by the Sacred Fire. So I'm not too worried, actually, as he goes for the Sacred Fire. And um, what do you know? He, um, he actually got the roll to kill me, which... Yeah, it's my fault. I definitely could have switched out there, though I can't recover against anything in this team, so I was quite on the spot. However, Landers can easily come in, and since we know he's no longer banded, I don't fear his extreme speed as he K with. Basically, I don't want anything else coming in. Landers kind of threaten out most of his possible checks, and a few defensive Pokemon he has, I can U turn against and actually getting Cryogonal back again, uh, which is exactly what he decides to do. He goes to Swampert, which I feel is quite right as we get even more chip on that and actually do even a larger sum of damage towards that. Bring in Phasma again, uh, he's definitely going to go for Stealth Frog, there is no about it, but that's the thing though, I kind of need to go for Rapid Spin yet again, since I don't want to receive damage on my side, however, I do want to receive damage on his side. Uh, as it goes for Protect, which I thought was strange at first, but at the same time, when you have a 4 times effective Pokemon with uh, damage with Grass, you kind of want to check whether or not it has it if you don't carry Rindoberry, which is something he doesn't do. I really like that he didn't have any kind of reduction barrier since it meant that anything that I do hit four times effective will care with. Uh, so Tapu Koko comes in and something comes in and we have to wrap his spin off. But while I don't fear the um, Koku, one thing Koku gets this generation is Defog. I was fearing whether or not there was going to be an aspect of he is going to try to go for that. However, I have to bring in Van Height and go for the soaking as we see the defog which is unfortunate it's not great game break or anything like that but it does kind of resolve in making it tougher for me to um, maneuver around this and stealth rock needs to be pushed on the field again now he goes for dazzling gleam and it does all right i mean it's a 60 base 60 somewhere uh, but my thunderbolt is easily 40 percent damage like it's it's a nuke on the field it's resisted sure but as you guys can see with the terrain in mind it's not by a lot as um, I can just pressure him and keep going for the Thunderbolts. Uh, I do believe I went for Shadow Ball here, expecting him to switch out, which was unfortunate. Hidden Power Grass would have been nice to actually check out here, but no, we don't get that. However, we do get a lot of recovery, which is really good. And at this point, since Swampert isn't defensively a threat towards me, uh, I'll actually just keep going for a Hidden Power Grass here, as I had no reason for actually switching out as Valplum comes in. And Valplum is a Pokemon, I think, is going to create a stalemate between us. While I can't touch him, um, he necessarily can't touch me that much either uh, when I switch into my Cryogonal. Because here's the thing, Cryogonal, if this is a special defensive cryo, um, Valplum, Cryogonal will win the matchup, but it will be a stalemate depending on if you have Sleep Powder or not. As we see Gidrain, as you guys can see, it's, it's not doing anything. Uh, all I basically do from here on out is actually banking for, actually, this is kind of scary, I'm actually going for that freeze since I know that this is a stalemate, depending depending on, of course, I stated whether or not he has a sleep powder. But we confirm it doesn't have that, and since it doesn't switch out, it means he's not necessarily that comfortable switching into something to take damage towards this. And um, basically, since his synthesis will well be over before my recover, I am in a spot where I can just keep going for freeze dry over and over again. However, after the second hit, we do get the freeze here. Uh, which I feel is unfortunate, but at the same time, we were in a situation where he's going to fall no matter what. It's just depending on who's fall first, you know, whether he's going to over sludge bomb trying to alleviate that. that the freeze just sped that up, but I stated uh, I was not going to lose that much. Uh, there was no way Valp was going to come out of top since it lacked sleep powder. However, it is unfortunate it happened so fast since i getting a really strong spot very, very fast, and I don't need to alleviate myself of recovery. Uh, since I'm back on track, basically, which is, well, let's say it's as it is, it's, it's kind of unfair. So, Medisham comes in. Now, I don't have too many good switching towards Medisham. While I will switch in my Ulyssa, basically what I'm looking for here is uh, the Fake Out and possibly the Wind for High Jump Kick or Drain Punch, and then I'm going to switch out Ulyssa in case that he has the Bullet Punch. I felt that that was probably my strongest 
way of alleviating this Pokemon is to go for Sun Headbutt, which was way worse. It does over half, and yeah, Bullet Punch is now a real issue, so I'm going to switch out. However, uh, when I switch out to Van Hyde predicting his um, Bullet Punch, Yellow switches out his own, definitely saying that he doesn't have that as the Scyther comes in, which rocks would have been really nice here. However, I can just go for Thunderbolt. Um, I should be able to do, depending on the set, around 50%, and I find out whether or not he's scarfed. He's clearly not scarfed, as the U turn will do a, a good chunk, really. It, it actually does. But at this point, you know, I needed that damage. It means if I go for Stealth Rocks, the Scyther is dead, which is potentially all I wanted. Now, Medichan comes in, and uh, I felt that I would, my strongest play here was actually to go for Protect, just to see, you know, if we try something different. But no, it goes with Fake Out, trying to get the residual damage. Protect was only here to kind of parry the Fake Out, as I'll now go for Shadow Ball. He's not going to take that damage towards me, because he, that basically means Landers rips up half the rest of his team. And clearly, you know, why wouldn't it? it at this point, Landers is very scary. As Shadow Ball does a, does a fair chunk to Koku, and the only way he really can go about this is actually to go for Dazzling Gleam and get my damage below what he wants to. And I felt that um, I could probably try to muster some recovery before falling because basically at this point, um, I want to force him to go back to Medishan where I can actually just go for Shadow Ball, get the high damage roll that I want to, uh, and I want to actually get myself away from the U turn or possible. Uh, quick attack range from the Scyther, as um, I should be in that area, so I felt very safe here uh, that the Medicham was going to come instead, and I stated I do want the damage onto the Medicham, because that means that my Cryogonal or Landris can actually wrap the game up as I want to. As Medicham comes in, going to go for the same place before with Protect, as there is no reason for me not doing so. <laughs> Basically, I'm going to die here with Jolteon, but the Shadow Ball will do a very very high damage roll on this Pokemon and quite frankly that's all I wanted. While I do believe Thunderbolt would do roughly the same, uh, I really just want to have the Shadow Ball I guess was my strongest play in mind. Actually thinking about it, Thunderbolt might actually have killed, so that might actually be the worst between the two. However, uh, we do get the damage I want to and at this point um, I'm actually going to bring Theta Max. I am banking now on the Swampert to come in, so I think I actually decided to... Uh, I think I U-turned here, I'm pretty sure I did that. Uh, either that, no, I went directly for a bullet punch. Uh, thinking about it, there was no reason for me to actually bring in Cicerin, uh, basically because Cryogonal, I do believe, was outspeeding here no matter what, since well, it confirmed the damage output, uh, since it did so much on my God of War. However, uh, I do go for U turn here and I get Cryogonal into the game. Uh, he actually decides to go for a Scholar, which I think was very fair. At this point, you know, you do what you have to to get some kind of still damage. He do connect a burn here, which is fortunate for him. Uh, even though it doesn't necessarily matter, it's still in the part where he didn't have any hacks in his side. I felt that I kind of got a bit of a stronger lead when he did, and um, I can easily here go for a free strike. And uh, he will now bring in the Medisham, hoping that the fake out is able to KO me, I think. Um, surprisingly enough, due to all the bulk that I have been building with Krogonal, it is actually able to, um, not with ease, but it will be able to take a fake out. I was actually fairly surprised about this, and uh, <laughs> I thought we'd do a lot more, but no. Vasma is still in the game, even though we confirmed it's adamant, I can stay in easily here and go for free strike. I don't need to worry about it. Uh, had he had a bullet punch, it would have showed down for already, as we actually just KO'd the Medicham, and the Scyther is his last remaining Pokemon. And I'm going to decide to be a bit greedy here and try to, instead of losing or winning 3-0, I'm going to decide to winning 4-0, which means that I'm going to switch out my Krogonal, go to the Theta Max, my bullet punching machine that is the sister at Seagulls from Nero Lace. Doesn't do anything because we are fairly bulky. However, a bullet punch is not able to kill a Saita. And he's going to retaliate with Hidden Power of Fire. Luckily, though, uh, you know, we have the Aka Berry. So it was all right. But at the same time, I think it was an unnecessary risk, considered that we didn't KO. And, you know, he could have very well go for a Sword Stance. And that would have meant that the Air Lace would have been a lot, lot scarier, even though I had a Scarf Guard of War in the back. So, yeah, I was fairly happy with my game here. Um... To Nasa's credit, I think he brought the right team against me. It's just that I was hoping this was the team I was going to tackle my team with, uh, which basically meant that I got the maneuverability I needed to kind of 
kind of pressure him the way I wanted. So I think um, I definitely think that the end play that was really really cool. I was really unfortunate that Yellison didn't survive that outcome. However, as stated here, I would not have been able to save Jellicent necessarily against that matchup either. I should have definitely recovered versus that Solar Beam, but that would have meant that I wouldn't have got an Entei with a range where it would basically die to rocks. Entei was a tremendous threat towards my team, and I think getting that out of the way very early was important for me because that meant Kurganal, Jolteon, and even Gardevoir could have adjusted themselves a lot smarter to the game, so I appreciated that. Um, that said, you know, a quick rundown about the team that I changed here. As I said here, Mega Gen is now a part of my team. This will mean that um, I will not be forced to play as defensive as I have been done before. And now, clearly, I played this game offensively, but with defensive checks. I used offensive Pokemon as defensive variants of them, and it worked, it worked but it looked strange. And I feel like play strange with that in mind. So I was really glad to get the energy to the team. We also have a Moongus now over Mega Venusaur, which is really cool. And Rhyperior, since I have a Rock type already, I don't need Rhyperior, which meant that I actually got Mesprit. Because uh, we always need a Psychic type, Mesprit is covering a lot of fields, actually. So I'm. I feel strongly towards Mesprit. I think Mesprit is a good general Pokemon. Very bulky, has healing wish, and just a broad move pool. I think it's very hard for most teams to adjust to it, which means that I have the opportunity of doing really well with it. And clearly my intention is to do just that. So, yeah, I really hope the team is stronger for it. If not, then... Well, joke's on me, right? Kamo is still a team. Though. I think Kamo is kind of a mascot for this generation, uh, or this at least this season for this generation for me i really like Kamo and really want to capitalize on that pokemon um and while it wasn't useful towards this game it's definitely going to be useful towards the other players i'll be facing in the future so with that said i hope you guys enjoyed this battle and also nasser thank you for the game really really exciting and very thrilling to the very end and i was very happy with like i said there they were how hacks turned in my favor clearly things speeded up just for the right all the wrong reasons i guess but I think it did the right call to the very end, to be completely honest. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye.